Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a two inch brush, a little bit of yellow and white. Let's come right here and just drop in a, a little bit of a glow. Don't need too much. Just a little something to kind of warm it up. There, I think we might even, we might even have some trees right around this area. And so those trees will really be catching the sunlight. There we go. Just a little bit and then let it fade out. Next with some blue, red, and white. Let's come, oh, we'll come right up here to the top and drop in the rest of the sky. Pretty soft color today. Now it's not very dark and I like that. And I did throw some red in there so that when I hit this yellow, <laughs> we're a little bit safer. We wouldn't want a, a bright green spot in the sky. So just let them gently come down and, and melt together. Not too much blending or they, they still might turn green. <laughs> there we go, this is fun. Next with our filbert brush and a nice soft gray color. Let's just scrub in some beautiful clouds up here. See, I'm just using the side of the brush and rubbing it right in, being very loose and giving myself all sorts of nice little edges here. There, we can throw just a bit of highlight on these, but not too much. We'll keep them kind of just simple today. They should get smaller as they come down toward the horizon. Now we're gonna go ahead and try something a little bit different. I'm gonna use my little flat brush. This is a synthetic brush. I'm gonna cut in a bunch of sharp lines here. Make a, make a very nice mountain. Normally I like to block these in with a filbert brush and that works very, very well. <laughs> but since we have this new brush, I wanna give it a try. Always using it in different ways to to see what works best with it and, and give you different ideas for your own paintings. So you can cut in and get more sharp edges with this one. So it just depends on whatever kind of effect that you want. Now the, the filbert brush does make better fuzzy edges. So it just depends on the day and the, and the type of mountain, how far away the mountain is and, and just whatever you want to paint. This is just a nice soft shadow color. We're gonna go back and, and add some highlights too. Next, we can block on some highlight with the same brush. Just a little bit of yellow, white, <laughs> touch of this gray color we had in the base of the mountain there. And I'm just brushing on a little bit of this highlight. There, because this brush is very sharp, you can cut in these very, very angular rocks, very sharp, sharp lines. There. And maybe a little bit over here in the background. The less paint you use on the brush, the softer it'll be. So here in the distance, you want to use a little bit less. Make it a little bit more fuzzy. Now we can go ahead and just work on another little mountain up here. This time I'm using the filbert brush and I'm tapping down with just a little bit of yellow, white, and a touch of brown. And this is gonna give us a closer mountain, one that just, oh, it's got a little more detail in it. See, this just gives you the indication of trees or, or grass or anything else that we might want growing up on here. And the colors are very soft and oh, they fit with the painting. It's so important when you do these paintings to make sure your colors work and the colors fit. There's nothing worse than a painting where the colors just don't make any sense. Just it'll throw your eye off and you're not gonna be happy with it. So if you can, try to keep these colors all, all working together well. So I wouldn't wanna do any bright green up here because it just wouldn't make sense. Too far away to see any bright colors. But in the foreground, oh, we could throw some bright green and that'll bring you close. It's really about using your, your colors to create distance in the painting. Next with our filbert brush, we'll go through a little bit of yellow, green, and some white. 
And as you can see, I do have a basic sketch here on the canvas. We'll just use this color to, to sort of brush in a nice little meadow back here. Now maybe this is like a rolling hill and it sort of slopes down like that. <laughs> there we go, good enough. Just a quick underpainting. And maybe while we get this going, just throw some of it down here. We may cover this up with, with something else, different color. But for now, let's just block in a small area where we think we're gonna have some grass here, right against the lake. Okay, good enough. Maybe let's go ahead and just make this a touch, touch darker. Sort of lead your eye in toward the center a little better. There, good enough. See how we're gently working forward with these colors. You don't jump to bright green. Save the bright green for later. Just gently transition colors. All right. And we'll set that brush down. And oh, this would be a good opportunity to use. To use our little flat brush. So we'll load it up with some, some black, yellow, touch of green, something like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in some tiny trees. Now, normally you wanna use a fan brush for this or something like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to put a lot of detail into these trees. I'm gonna use this brush because it comes to a a very sharp chisel. The only other brush that would work for this, maybe, would be the, would be the little liner brush. Use the tip of that to give yourself these little evergreens in the distance. Work quickly, but then on a few of them, you're gonna to wanna to throw some detail. Now with our filbert brush in very bright yellow and green color, let's just work on some beautiful highlight areas out here. See, I'm just dragging it across to create these nice pockets of light. Don't have to be everywhere, just here and there. Leave a little bit of the texture of the canvas showing through. That'll give you a very soft, grassy look. The more you rub one area, the softer it'll become. <laughs> so be careful not to overwork it. Now with our filbert brush and a little bit of yellow and white, Let's just begin to block in some beautiful water back here. See, so I'm just scrubbing it very firmly with this brush. It's gonna pick up some of these colors we have down and that'll create automatic reflections. We can also come back and add reflections in just using whatever color we have above. There, maybe a little water that sort of, sort of drifts back like that. You can change it up as you go along, that's okay. Now maybe here in this mix of trees, there's some with beautiful leaves on them. They're not the pine trees. So they're, they're different, they're shaped differently. They've got, they've got different colors in them. So I'm just dabbing down with some yellow, some green, touch of white to lighten it. And I'm creating these beautiful shapes. And we'll put the evergreens in around them so they kind of fit into the painting. There's some. Just dab them in, almost randomly, but not repetitively. All right, next let's just work on this little bit of a, a sand bank right here. This separates the land from the water. There we go. You can kind of use the, the corner of the brush to, to add in little details. Pretty simple. This is either sand or maybe some far away rocks and gravel, stuff like that. Really not too important what it is. Far more important, it's just that it's, it's separating the land, the dark land from the dark reflections in the water. There we go. Leave it nice and broken with a lot of texture showing through. Now I think this would be a great time to just cut in a few little rocks down here at the bottom. Some nice large boulders and things like that. Again, this chiseled edge brush works well for this because, because it cuts in really sharp. Of course, if you wanted more rounded rocks, the filbert brush is probably the one to use. There. Then we'll highlight these a little bit later. Just for now, a lot of irregular shapes. 
and very, very dark. Now with the filbert brush, we're gonna do something so exciting. I'm gonna drop in a backlit tree. And we've done these before in the past together. They're so much fun, but normally we do evergreens that are backlit. I don't know why, we just do. But today we're gonna do a nice, beautiful leaf tree that's silhouetted here. You can see, you can see the light filtering through the back of the tree. It's so effective. So I'm starting out with a light color. And if you remember, if you remember our other paintings where we did, we started with the light color and then we go back and we put the dark in the center. That's what creates that beautiful effect. It's so fun. I love showing you all these new and different techniques. Next, we'll drop in the darker leaves that I was talking about. You see this? I'm just dabbing and dotting. And I'm also kind of giving my, my wrist a little flick there and that smudges the color just a little. It blends it in, makes it not so hard. There we go, that's about all it takes. Just do this over and over again and you can, you can change it up as you go. You don't have to stick to the same old green color. Throw some brown in it, yellow, different different amounts of yellow, white, whatever. Change it up, just make it different. There we go. This is, this is looking pretty good. Next, let's just brush in a couple of rocks down here in the foreground. I'm just using our little three quarter inch flat and cutting them in. <laughs> a lot of fun. See that? You can make them all sorts of shapes and sizes. See that hmm, crazy d downstroke there? I just created a, a very different shaped rock. See that? All right, you can add more than one color. Here's a, a lighter shade. Throw that on. Next, we'll just tap in a few blades of grass down here in the foreground. Now we're gonna, not gonna need so much that it's overwhelming. I'm just putting in a few. It kind of helps to make everything look complete and detailed. There's some there, maybe some dark. Let's do some, some dark things over here. Maybe they don't stand out very good because they're, they're blocked from the sunlight by this big tree that, oh, it seems to be catching all the light around here. So the stuff under it's kind of in shadow. You can also push the rocks back by tapping a little grass around the, around the base. Now with our filbert brush, let's go ahead and just drop in a few little leaves up here to this tree. I'm gonna make a new tree up here. I just think it would look very nice. All right. Just like before, except this time I just decided to start with the dark. It's not so backlit, it's a little bit more a little bit more kind of lit on the side, I guess. I don't know. It's not as bright. It's a little different. I'm just doing it differently. Set that brush down. Oh, let's see. This little three quarter flat. It's clean and ready to go. So just load it up and, and drop on a few more leaves right out here. All right. I think I changed my mind on something here. Remember we had this backlit tree. Well, I was looking at it for a few minutes and, and I decided that this is not the spot for, a, for this kind of a backlit tree. Because in this painting today, you see we've got the, a very strong light source on these trees and it's very, very much on the right hand side. So this tree just had too much backlighting for this particular setting. So I'm just gonna show you how to come in here and, and just fill it in a little, little dark color, green, black. You can put a shadow on one side and, and problem solved. So you're never locked in. I wanna show you how you can go back and change things even when you, you think you're done. You don't always have to just stop. You can change it just like I'm doing. Very, very free. There, you see how that makes a little more sense. So you got light on this side because the light's kind of coming in here and occasionally you have a little, a little bit that sticks through, a little light that shines through, but not as much, not nearly as much. We'll do a backlit tree on some, some painting where we have the sun coming directly behind. There. 
All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.